Hey guys, here is lesson 5.7, write zeros in the dividend. So our essential question today is, when do you write a zero in the dividend to find a quotient? So let's go ahead, put your star beside your essential question, and we're going to read where it says connect. When decimals are divided, the dividend may not have enough decimals for you to complete the division. In these cases, you can write zeros to the right of the last digit. All right, so that's like when I see the decimal 90 and 8 tenths, okay, I can add a zero to the end of this. It doesn't change the value of my decimal, so I can keep adding zeros. We're not going to do that, but I'm going to show you what that would look like when we're actually dividing. So with this one, it says the equivalent fraction show the writing zeros to the right of the decimal does not change the value. And that's what we set up here. It's the same thing. 90 and 8 tenths is going to be the same as with all of those zeros. So during a fundraising event, Adrian rode his bicycle 45 and 8 tenths miles for four hour, in four hours. Find his speed in miles per hour by dividing the distance by the time. So I'm going to circle my important information. He, ran, he rode 45 and 8 tenths miles in four hours. So we need to find it by dividing the distance by the time. And they've already set that up for us. 45 and 8 tenths divided by 4. So what you would do is first you would estimate 44 divided by 4 is going to be about 11. So we know it's going to be around 11. So our first step we're going to do is write the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal. So we're going to go ahead, because there's a whole number out here, I can go ahead and bring my decimal up to right here, and then I can go ahead and solve. So I'm going to go ahead, 4 will go into 4 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. If I subtract that, I'm left with 0. I bring down my 5. 4 will go into 5 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract that. I have 1 left. Now I have 8. I'm bringing that down. So now I have 18. 4 will go into 18. Whoops, I need to remember to bring my decimal up. So now, how many times will 4 go into 18? I know it'll go into 18 4 times. So 4 times 4 is 16, I'm left with 2. So normally what we would do is we would say remainder 2. But when we're dividing with decimals, we're not going to have a remainder. So what we're going to do, I'm going to bring it over just a little bit. I'm going to keep my numbers the same. Decimal 4. I'm going to put a 0 right here because remember, a 0 is not going to change this. So I know that 8 minus 16 is 2. I bring down a 0. And then I can say 4 will go into 20 five times. 5 times 4 is 20, and so I'm left with 0. Sometimes you might have to do it more than once, so then you would add another 0 if you still had a remainder. Okay, so Adrian's speed was, here's his speed, 11 and 45 hundredths miles per hour. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. It says connect. When you divide whole numbers, you can show the amount that is left over by writing a remainder or a fraction. By writing zeros in the dividend, you can also show that the amount show the amount as a decimal. Um, and that's just like what we showed a few minutes ago. So I, they've already done the hard part for us is the dividing. So let's just catch back up. Um, 15 will go into 37 two times. Seven, two times 15 is 30. Subtract it, you're left with 7. You brought down your 2. You can do this with me, guys. 15 will go into 72 four times. 4 times 15 is 60, 60. So I subtract that, and I'm left with 12. Now I'm bringing down my zero. Now I'm going to see how many times will 15, oh, I'm so sorry. I just did all that without you seeing it. 15 will go into 120. Well, I don't know how many times. I know it'll be less than 10. So let's think, let me, let's see if it's eight. So 15 times eight. 
that's 40, put up my 4, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12, actually that's perfect. So it'll go in at 8 times, 8 times 15 is 120, so I would subtract that and get 0. Okay, so 372 divided by 15 is going to give me 24 and 8 tenths. So you would do it just like your normal division. Um, you're just adding a zero at the end. Um, so you would just put your decimal and you can get a smaller. So instead of getting a remainder, you would get a just a smaller portion of the whole. All right, so let's look at number, or this part at the bottom where it says try this. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so it says divide, write a decimal, Write a zero at the end of the dividend as needed. So you're not always going to need the zero at the end. So sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. You just have to, it depends on the thing itself. All right, so we're seeing how many times will six hundredths go into one and twenty-three hundredths. So we moved our decimal one, two places on the outside. So remember, we have to move it one, two places on the inside. And I love how they rewrote it. They rewrote their division problem so that they can see it as it is new. So I know that six will go into 12 two times. Two times six is 12. Bring down my zero. Then I'm going to bring down my three. Six will go into three zero times. So six, zero times six is zero. I bring down my three. I can't, so I'm left with this remainder of three. I can't leave it as a remainder. So I'm bringing down my zero. Six will go into 30 five times. I know that one. Five times six is 30. And 30 minus 30 is 0. So then I'm left with 20 and 5 tenths. All right, let's look at this one. Divide 10 by 8 tenths. Again, this is the number that you're putting on your outside of your house. So I can't leave a decimal on the outside of my house. So I have to move it over one place. So if I move this over one place, I'm going to move this one over one. And then I'm going to rewrite my problem. 8 will go into 1 zero times, but I know 8 will go into 10 one time. 1 times 8 is 8, subtracted, and I'm left with 2. Then I'll bring down my zero. 8 will go into 20 two times. 2 times 8 is 16, subtracted, and I'm left with 4. Now remember, we're not leaving remainders now. What we're going to do is we're going to bring a, dec a zero behind my decimal point. So I have to bring a decimal point up here. Remember, your decimal point goes straight up. It doesn't move. I'm still seeing people that are moving your decimal. It doesn't go anywhere. It just goes straight up to the top of the house. Okay. So now I have a zero right here. So now 8 will go into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40 and I'm left with zero. So my answer would be 12 and 5 tenths. All right, let's try a couple of couple more together. All right, so this first one, it says write the quotient with the decimal point correctly, placed correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up. I know this number is going to go on my outside, zero and 8 tenths divided into five, I cannot multiply this. I have to move my decimal over one place. So if I move that one over one place, I have to move this one over one place. And so now I know that it's going to be right here, put my zero there, and I put my decimal up here. So then I can say, I know that eight will go into 50 four times, right, four times, no, not four times. Sorry, I'm thinking of in um, I'm thinking of forty, not fifty. Eight will go into fifty six times. Six times eight is forty eight. Subtract it. I'm left with two. Then I can do my zero. Eight will go into twenty two times. Two times eight is 16, subtract it, and I'm left with 4. 
I can't do it again. So I have to do it again. I have to use my zero again. So I'm going to put another zero up and bring it down. 8 will go into 40 five times. So that would be 40 left with zero. So here I have 625. So it wants me to place my decimal. So I know that it's right here between the 6 and the 2. So I'm going to rewrite it right here because I ran over a little bit. All right, so now let's look at number two. We're going to do the same way. This number is going to go on my outside. Six will go into 226 and 1 tenth. I'm not moving my decimal anywhere because I can't. I don't need to. So my decimal, I know, is going straight up. Twelve, six will go into 26 four times. So at this point, I already know where my decimal is going in this number. I know it's going to go between the four and the three because that's where it is right there. Okay, but I can keep doing my problem. Four times six is 24. Subtract, I'm left with two, bring down my one. Six will go into 21 three times. Three times six is 18. Subtract that and I'm left with three. Bring down my zero. Six will go into 35 times. So I've already done my answer right here. Okay. Be careful with these. Um, so I want you to do number three and four on your own. But let's look at number five, okay? I'm going to divide it just like I've been doing with my whole numbers. So I know that four will go into 32. How many times? Eight. Four times eight is 32. Subtract it, I'm left with zero. So I'm going to bring down my six. Four will go into six two times. Two times, oops, no, it won't go into two times. Sorry, it'll go into one time. I am losing my mind. One times four is four. Subtract it, and I'm left with two. Now, I've left off a super important part that I keep seeing some of my friends leaving off. I left off my decimal. Now, I know some of my friends are going to go back and say, hey, I'm just going to write it in at the end. But I know some of my friends are going to forget to do that. So don't be one of those friends that forgets to do it. Do it as you're doing your problem. That way you know exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay? So now I'm left with two. I don't want a remainder. I'm going to put a zero right here. So now I'm going to put my zero there and bring it down. So now I have four. We'll go into 20 five times. Five times four is 20. Put down my 20. And I'm left with zero, so I know that this is where I need to be. Eight and fifteen hundredths. There's my answer. All right, so let's look at number six. What I'm going to do is I cannot have a decimal on the outside of my house. I have to move it next door. So I'm going to move it over one place. So that means this one. Here's my med that invisible decimal. I have to move that over one place. So now this is 90, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite it. Oops, I just rewrote it with the decimal. 12 will go into 90, okay? 12 will go into 90 seven times. Seven times 12 is 84. So I'm gonna put my 84 down. Subtract it, I'm left with six. Remember, we're not leaving remainder. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our decimal right here because that's where the decimal is going to be and put that right here and bring down my zero. Now, 12 will go into 60 five times. Five times 12 is 60. If I subtract it, I'm left with zero. So my answer would be seven and five tenths. All right, let's do one more together, and then I'm going to let you fly on your own. All right, so number eight. So let's go all the way over to number eight. I have 14 
hundredths divided into 91 hundredths. So I see that there's a decimal on the outside. I have to change it. I cannot divide with a decimal on the outside. So I'm going to move it over one, two places. So I move this one over one, two. Whatever I do to the outside, I have to do to the inside. And now I'm going to rewrite it. 1491. This is where my decimal is, just in case I need to add a zero at the end. 14 will go into 91. Um, let's try five times and see if that works. So over here, somewhere on your page, we're going to write 14 times 5. So I know 4 times 5 is 20. Put down my zero, regroup my 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. I don't think that's going to be close enough, so let's add 14 more. Add it, so that's a 4 and an 8. I think that's going to be the closest without going over. So I know that 14 will go into 91 six times. 6 times 14 we said was 84. Let's subtract it and see what we get. You should have gotten 7. So now... 14 will go into 7, so I have to bring down a 0. Now, 14 will go into 70. We already did that. If we go back up to the top, it'll go into 70 five times. So I know, bring up your decimal before we do anything else. Bring up your decimal. 14 will go into 70 five times. So 5 times 14 is 70. Subtract it. You're left with zero. So here is your final answer, six and five tenths. All right, now I'm going to get you to do one on your own, and I want you to check your work and see if you got it correct. All right, so I want you to do nine on your own. Okay, so pause the video, do it on your own, and check your answers. If you got ten and five tenths, you are correct. Double check your work and make sure it looks like mine. Make sure your decimal is in the correct place. And make sure you added a zero where you needed to add a zero. Okay? So let's do um, one more while you check your work. So go ahead and pause the video. Do number ten on your own. And then unpause it when you're done to check your work. All right, here should be your correct answer. Double check and make sure that you put your decimal. Make sure the first thing you did, you should have moved your decimals because you can't have a decimal on the outside of your house. You have to move it out, move it over. And if whatever you do on the outside, you have to do to the inside. And then make sure you place the decimal in the correct place. And you should have ended up with one and six tenths. All right, so now on your own, this is without me checking, I want you to do 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, do 16, flip to the back, 25, try number 6, 28. Okay, do those problems for me. Then once you're done, make sure you do your lesson check um, and then submit that for me. If you have questions, make sure you come on to Google Meet so that I can help you. All right, guys, good luck.